welcome to Not D and D, the show where we talk about tabletop RPGs that are not Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and this is, of course, part of En World Live, which is part of En World. I'm your host Jessica, but we all know none of you are here to see me. Uh, you are all here to see, as some have said in the chat already, their favorite game designer. Uh, we have Robert oh. Schwab here. <laughs> Robert, thanks Hello. so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. Excellent. And we are very excited because this week we are going to be talking about the game that has been voted on EM World as one of the top 10 most anticipated tabletop RPGs of 2022 and 2023. <laughs> so we have a Shadow of the Weird Wizard is what we're going to be talking about here. And uh, somebody's already said, is this linked to the Shadow of the Demon Lord? Cool. And the answer in brief is yes, yes, it is. And we'll go into more detail as we talk about uh, the game here. Um, but before we jump into talking about uh, the game, I always kind of like to go into the, your background with tabletop RPGs, uh, which yours is quite extensive, so we may need to take some time on this. So, Robert, tell us about uh, what you do in tabletop RPGs. Right. Uh, I've been uh, designing uh, role-playing games and supplements for role-playing games for almost, well, probably 20 years. Uh, I started out in the D20 boom for third edition, really 3.5, and... I did uh, a number of products for a variety of companies that include AEG, Green Ronin, Paradigm Concepts, Wizards of the Coast, uh, Paizo Publishing. The list goes on. Um, during that time, I also was a line developer for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. Uh, mm -hmm. I also designed the Thieves World for D uh, game setting for D20 system and Black Company and Grimm. And then uh, I guess my last project I did as a freelancer was with Green Renine. Uh, actually, I was staff at that point, which was a Song and Ice and Fire role playing based on mm -hmm. George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones series. Mm -hmm. uh, I got hired by Wizards of the Coast as a contractor, and I worked there from, I guess, around 2008 until 2014. Um, during that time, I worked extensively on fourth edition, uh, some third edition stuff, uh, Star Wars, and Hello, GG. Um, and then, um, what else? Oh, yeah, fifth edition. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked on that for uh, from the, the start to finish of that game. And so then after that, I left Wizards of the Coast and I started my imprint. And the first game that came out was in 2015 Shadow of the Demon Lord, uh, your nastiest, most disgusting, violent game ever, uh, <laughs> followed by Punk Apocalyptic, which is a game for 16 year olds in spirit, heart, and mind. And now I'm working on Shadow of the Weird Wizard a family-friendly version of all the above. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I mean, there's lots of questions about it. So someone has already said, so they're curious about how toned down Wiz Weird Wizards will be compared, you know, Shadow of the Demon Lord, which is, as you said, is could be described as not a family-friendly family, family friendly game. Would you agree? I would agree very much. Uh, <laughs> Shadow of the Demon Lord was my catharsis. I was able to get out a lot of my rage and, uh, and put it in print for good or ill. Uh, Shadow of the Weird Wizard is a slightly, I hate to use this word, mature look at what I was trying to do with the system of Demon Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has a lot of, lot, much less of the fart and poop jokes and, uh, and, and bizarre, nasty things that uh, come out of my id. Um, this game doesn't, this game is designed, well, the biggest difference between the two games is that Demon Lord allows you or encourages you to play whatever the heck you can imagine. And whether that's a psychopathic murderer or a, uh, a cannibal or whatever else, alongside of you know genuine heroes because the world is ending and everyone is a stake in kind of saving creation from the demon lords of vast and uh, insatiable appetite. Uh, in Shadow of the Weird Wizard, the expectation is that all the characters are heroes. And not only are you heroes, you play an important part in uh, keeping alive uh, what's left of a crumbling uh, old country in the the that's that's falling apart due to infighting and civil war and mm -hmm. so on, and so uh, your characters are are helping refugees escape from that realm and into the borderlands, where they have to contend with monsters and the creations of the weird wizard himself. Fantastic. So this game's been in uh, in production and, and being being made for a while. Because I think you mentioned you had the idea for this at the same time you were kind of releasing Shadow of the Demon Lord. So that's that's a number right. of years. Yeah. So yeah, it's been about five years or so. Maybe now I, I'm I'm afraid to say seven, but let's say I've been working on it steadily for five years. 
Fantastic. And so the big question that everyone asking is, or the only relevant question that someone has commented is, is when? So 2023 is the year it's going to be available? Yes. Uh, right now we have uh, the play test groups are working through the final uh, iteration of the design phase. Uh, the reason why I've delayed the release for this game is that I have a, a rule zero on Kickstarter things and any crowdsourcing is that the writing has to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've got to be happy with it. And I don't want to be the guy that is responsible for why it's late or anything like that. So um, one of the things I take great pride in with Demon Lord was that, you know, mm -hmm. we did a Kickstarter promise a year. We were out well before the year was up. And that's Amazing. been true for everything else I've released so far. So um, as I was saying, we're, I'm just really tidying up the last of the manuscript. And uh, I would say we're going to go to Kickstarter end of March, early April with Ooh. a release six months from there, six months for the digital, okay. depending on how long it takes to get the, the printed product from uh, the printer. Sure. Again, that's really quick. Like most Kickstarters, you kind of back something and then you forget about it. And then like years later, a book arrives at your house and you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. So so it's not going to be that sort of experience with this. So it's that's hence why the delays. That's awesome to hear. Uh, and the, the people in the chat are commenting as well. They're asking, saying an excellent track record. So it seems like it's much appreciated. Um, so let's kind of get into into the, the things about the game. Um, so uh, someone's commented, there's obviously some heavy nods um, to Shadow of the Demon Lord in this setting. Um, is it possible to port some of that content across to Shadow of the Weird Wizard? Or are they Certainly. completely separate? They're, yeah. they are, they, there are a lot of similarities between both games. They look structurally the same, uh, but there are some things that are not present in Weird Wizard where, uh, where you expect to see those in Demon Lord. For example, um, insanity and madness and loss of agency. Uh, are, those are elements, game design elements that did not come forward in Weird Wizard, largely because I think that, uh, you know, even I, I just don't think it has any place really to deal with those kind of horrific, or not necessarily horrific, but challenges when yeah. we when the expectation is that you're your bold heroes doing cool heroic mm -hmm. things. So, uh, but you can still use a lot of the monsters. Uh, they use the same kind of vocabulary, uh, and it's pretty easy to be able to sort out that when Demon Lord says attack roll, and we use roll to attack and Weird Wizard, what we're really talking about. It's basically the same thing. Uh, there are a few other slight changes. Um, the initiative system is still basically the same, whereas mm -hmm. monsters are assumed to go first. But in this case, there's an activity called uh, taking the initiative, which allows you to jump ahead and you give up something in return. So there's a few minor things, but they, they're both re relatively compatible. And we will also include a document that gives some com basic conversion things. And I also okay. do plan to have a sinister subline to Weird Wizard that would enable me to also bring some of the darker edged elements for people who want to be able to play Demon Lord and Weird Wizard as well. OK, great. But the idea behind this is that this is something a little bit more family friendly so a little bit more pulled back or as you said a little bit more kind of mature um so what are the kind of the key things you've been working on in in the system that makes it it different and more accessible in that way so uh, there is a big thing in demon lord about corruption and mm -hmm. corruption was kind of a control valve for uh for characters who decide or players who decide they want to take their characters in very disturbing way in disturbing directions mm -hmm. that corruption would allow you to as a game master to kind of show some of the uh, reflection of that on the body and mind uh, mm -hmm. as you do this. Uh, we don't have any of that stuff in this game. We have two mm -hmm. dark magic traditions, and it's not even clear at this point if I'm going to include them. They're mostly okay. there for a sake of completeness. Uh, this is going to be a game about casting fireballs and talking to uh, the you know you, the champion of your gods or transforming into an avatar of your god. Or, you know, but there still will be assassins. I, I describe it as gray fantasy not dark fantasy so okay. it's got it, it's got monstrous elements and it can be some frightening situations but i would imagine that that's it's that's it, it's so tame I, I can imagine anybody could play this game okay i mean it's um, no it's no worse than the description of the nine hells in D, D, for example it's it's certainly not anywhere close to that Okay, fantastic. So um, some people are asking about what's the difference between in power levels that players achieve between the two different games? Both games run on a uh, zero or level one half to level 10 uh, progression. 
Um, characters tend to be a little bit more powerful in Weird Wizard towards the end because we expect that you will be fighting the big, scary giants. And yeah. uh, in case a demon does happen to break through the, the barriers, you might be taking on one of those or exploring all sorts of dangerous situations. So there's a lot, you get a lot of other things that kind of lived in a cult philosophy, which was a big supplement for Demon Lord a little sooner. You can, uh, and the game expects you to be able to freely move by the time you're at the master tier, which is the top third of the game. Um, and you can summon monsters to fight for you and do all those things. Uh, but it, there is a, is a very clear progression where you are a, at the novice tier, you, you don't have a whole lot to play with. And that's good because it lets you it lets you learn the the ins and outs of the game, where the expert tier adds some complexity and gives you a little more gives you more tools to play with, and mm -hmm. the master tier is where it's kind of wild and open and a little right. bit chaotic but exciting. Okay, so that's the kind of the high level uh, kind of play there, um, and also I I don't know how you'd answer this because this feels like a very GM table thing, but. Will there be a new anti-murder hobo mechanic to replace corruption? Is is kind of what they were saying, but I feel I like being think... a murder hobo is is something players sure. sometimes just do, and you can't stop them. <laughs> but yeah, right. Uh, I think that there is, uh, and I do, I do agree to some extent that there is going to be, there is some table guidance uh, mm -hmm. where you in uh, Demon Lord you could roll for one of your professions as and be a murderer from the very start. And that's your mm -hmm. background, and that's kind of yeah. how your your characters. There is the assumption that you might do those kinds of things. This game doesn't. This game tells you right up front that you are one of the good guys, and it is your mm -hmm. job to 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 help these these people who are making this terrifically dangerous journey into these lands and protect them while they're trying to rebuild civilization in this formerly unclaimed space. So I don't think that I didn't feel as if there was there need to be lightning bolts from on high. Uh, I will say, though, that uh, this is a game where the gods are sometimes present in the world. And so it's mm -hmm. not out of the question to see Grandfather Tree walking through the woods. Uh, so or or uh, the goddess of justice might send a fury down to punish the murder hobo of the group who is kind of going crazy. So, yeah. Good to hear. Um, so, with uh, speaking about characters a bit, there. So, you're saying you're playing you're, you're playing the good guys in this. Um, is character character creations a bit different uh, in this game? Could you talk us through what character creation looks like? Sure. Uh, I want to kind of get away, get to the. Well, actually, really, what I wanted to do with this game and all the games I've been working on is get you into the game as fast as possible. So, in Weird Wizard, you just make a few decisions. You choose mm -hmm. an ancestry. You uh, choose a suite of attribute scores. You choose a profession, and then you make a, then you flavor your character in whatever way you want, and then you're ready to go. That's all mm -hmm. you have to do. There's no other choices. And that first adventure or quest that you play through uh, teaches you the ins and outs of the game, the most basic mm -hmm. uh, elements of gameplay, like yeah. rolling dice and doing damage yeah. and, ca and maybe casting a spell. Uh, and then what your experience is from that first quest inform the decision you're going to make when you choose your path, which you may be a warrior or a magician or a devotee mm -hmm. or a, a rogue. And so that, that means that you've got a narrative reason for developing the way you are. And there's not kind of like an elaborate backstory because you're playing through that elaborate backstory. The okay. elaborate backstory of the, is being realized in gameplay also unifies the player characters as a group of, of heroes because they're making, they're doing, a major achievement which then sets their sets their course for the rest of the campaign okay cool so i mean it sounds like you're saying you, you're kind of learning through play um would you say this uh is a good pl a place for people new to role playing would be good to jump in or is this just people that are coming from other systems uh, an introduction to this particular game i believe this one's going to be just fine for newcomers i found demon lord had the same benefit b because it, the mechanics of the game engine are are so but they're familiar, but they're also very simple. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of room for improvisation. And and there's also a lot of uh, assurance that you're not making suboptimal choices or you're mm -hmm. you're going to do something wrong. Uh, sure. And it's really just becomes more of a, a exchange of descriptions and reactions to those descriptions and what you'd normally expect from a role-playing game. But it, the, I think the big sell here is that people can just jump in Mm -hmm. and have a character ready to go in five minutes and they're playing the game yeah. rather than 
you know, stack of books and you're, sure. you're, de- you're sifting through that for the, the yeah. best expression of your character. I think that sounds really great that it's got that accessible element to it because for some reason some people are looking to play games that are not Dungeons and Dragons at the moment so perhaps that would be an interesting draw. Uh, Not sure why. Yeah, no (laughs) Uh, idea. (laughs) <laughs> talking uh, a little bit um you know about character creation um got some questions asking a bit more about the setting so because as you said it's kind of a fantasy setting so what makes it different to say kind of the forgotten realms or a setting like that okay uh that's a good question uh there are three things i was trying to do with this game well there there are three expressions that i was trying to do with this game one i am a long time greyhawk fan i i love greyhawk Mm-hmm. Uh, it's my favorite setting of D&D, and I really wanted to write something of a love letter to it. But okay. I also realized that everybody has Greyhawk, and Greyhawk's not really what this game's about. So Greyhawk's in the background. Greyhawk's in the past. And that's the mm-hmm. the old country is, you could envision that as a place very Greyhawk-esque. The mm-hmm. Borderlands, which is where most of the action takes place, is this place in between. And it is, um, it's, it's largely been forgotten and left alone because it borders the realms controlled, once controlled by the weird wizard, who mm-hmm. is uh, this scary figure that lives in the new lands. Really, mm-hmm. really complicated names here. But the yeah. borderlands themselves are, are wide open. Uh, there, are, there are indigenous people here, but most of them have been contending with a weird wizard as well. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the uh, connections you make with the characters are either opportunists who are like goblins, villainous goblins, mm-hmm. or undead that have been locked away, or uh, other refugees that have come from places in the old kingdom. So this gives you, as, as a group, a chance to kind of build your own setting in this mm-hmm. map. Uh, so it is fluid in that sense. There's also not, uh, there's also not 5,000 years of history that one has to digest, because uh, the history doesn't matter because it's all in the past. And sure. it doesn't really affect what's going on in the in the gameplay okay so you don't have to sit down and read all the books and lore if, if you don't want to you can just jump right in and play um no lore is very very light excellent that's that's what i like because i don't like having homework before i come play a game personally right. um but you know these people living under perhaps you could say the shadow of this weird wizard perhaps one might phrase it as uh so what do we know about or what do the players know about the weird wizard at the beginning of the game like is, uh, is the they know this character as uh, a menacing figure, one who mm-hmm. has said that my lands are 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 not to be trespassed. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is on the very on the, the there's a part of the map that shows a climb, which is this climb this region where the uh, landscape is rising up to the new lands, and there are two gigantic statues of the weird wizard that are that flank it, that bar the path. But they also know the weird wizard has recently disappeared. And with his disappearance, there have been the emergence of the clockwork people, which were his helpers and creations. They become player characters you can play. Uh, There are strange uh, wizard, uh, wizard, wizard rot, which are uh, hybrid monsters assembled from different types of creatures. Uh, Then you got the land, the new lands themselves, which is a place that uh, groups can explore that don't behave in the way that we expect them to. So Mm. you could have rivers of tumbling stone or, sky islands or mountain that actually breaches the dome of the, the dome of the world and reaches out into space uh, all sorts of bizarre stuff that i want to be able to make it ultra fantastical and that's kind of that's all siloed in these new lands which don't get yeah. a map and may never get an official map because i really want the players and the groups to define that place on their own so we oh, might nice. do spots and sections but it's up to the group the audience to kind of assemble this this new and exciting world in whatever way they see fit. That's really nice. So it's, yeah, it's not all written. You need to get out there and explore the world and and make it yourself. I love that. Um, so you mentioned a little bit there about kind of kind of characters there and kind of people you could play, but um, we mentioned that creating a character, you've got attributes, ancestry, background, and identity. Uh, we've got somebody asking what ancestries will players have access to in this game? So uh, it's a, I'm showing my my uh, bias, but humans are the default. But we, because uh, it's my bias, uh, sure. I did include. Right now, I've got 20 designs for 20. Well, designs for 20 ancestries that include the familiar to the strange. Uh, mm-hmm. So some of the familiar figures you expect to see: dwarves and elves, 
uh, some of the stranger types. We have funds as a default ancestry, mm -hmm. uh, clockworks. Um, we have uh, the sphinxes, which are cat oh. people because who ever likes cats, including this yeah. cat that's sitting in front of my desk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so you've got those. And then we have the, yeah. um, they're the, the, the divas. Uh, they are a people who uh, uploaded their essence into these glowing crystals to save okay. themselves from the destruction of their civilization when the, they ticked mm -hmm. off the gods for defeating death. And so they are then reborn into new mortal bodies when they make a pact with a mortal who finds them. And so these kind of luminous beings live inside you uh, oh. while they're, so they're, that's another, uh, another option. So there's lots of interesting, cool, distinctive yeah. character types you can play. We also have Fanatory, which are gonna be these big hulking ogre-like fo uh, folks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see, Hobgoblins, because we need Hobgoblins. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. That sounds awesome. So it sounds like there's a there's a whole lot that you've got there to kind of play with already. Some people right. are asking now. In fairness, you haven't even got the book out yet. So some people are asking about kind of post release content. So what is there a plan to kind of do kind of more ancestries and kind of grow this over time, or or is it too right. early to even talk about that? <laughs> well, uh, I you can I think fans of Demon Lord can expect the same degree of releases and support that I've given to that game will also go to Weird Wizard. Uh, the really the, the the main thrust of what will probably be added to the game will be more enemies, more adventure content, more paths. And let me mm -hmm. just talk briefly what paths are. So I mm -hmm. talked about the the novice expert and master tier, yes. uh, and that your each your novice paths are warrior, uh, magician, and so on. At every one of those tier points, you have the choice, you have the opportunity to choose a new path to take. Mm -hmm. And you're not, there are no requirements to choose these paths. So you might start off as a magician and then decide, you know, I'm I'm out there in the wilderness. I'd like to be a good uh, scout type character. And so you decide, I'm going to go from magician to, to uh, let's say, ranger. And then when you hit master tier, you might decide, well, I also want to make cool little robots. So I'm going to make, I'm going to choose the artificer as my master path. And so you've got this really neat story that reflects what's going on in the campaign. Uh, mm -hmm that's reflected mechanically and also assures you as a player that your character is going to be just as functional as somebody who said, I just want to play a warrior and not make any other change, not make any other choices. And so, so. the characters are, are as balanced as they can possibly be. So we give, this gives me the ability to make lots more paths to, as uh, we reveal more of the world. And so mm -hmm. we can do, uh, because I think when Kim Mohan and I were working on uh, the initial edits, um, I was at 140 master paths and I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm scaling it down to 40. So that gives me a hundred more yeah. paths I can throw out later. So there's mm -hmm. a lots of small, but cool add-ons mm -hmm. to the game in the, in the months and years to have to come. How do you, how do you edit down from that number of choices to just, the, was it 40 you said you're going to try to get it down to now? Yeah, I've got them. I've got them pulled out now. Um, yeah. It was hard. It's, it's hard, but also um, it's really easy to kill my babies. Kill your darlings, as it's known. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, fair enough. I, I guess that's fine. But um, so this is kind of linked to what we we're just talking about as well. Is like so. There's a campaign. There's a story in the, kind of the core book that will be coming out first. Uh, we, we will have as a stretch goal an eleven uh, quest arc that will be a full campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we in the Demon Lord Kickstarter, I did a lot of standalone uh, adventures mm -hmm. or quests. Uh, this will for Weird Wizard. I'm shooting more for longer form where there are going to be 11 quest bundles and mm -hmm. i have uh 20 of them sketched out so it's a matter of writing them but i know what they're i know what's going to happen in each of them uh we will also be populating these with uh again more standalone quests the objective for every quest is that something you can start play and finish in one sitting mm -hmm. so if you've got yeah. four hours to put together you can play through the full quest and get the benefits for doing so so it means awesome. that campaigns, you can play a full campaign in 40 to 44 hours. Fantastic. We've also had some uh, question here talking about kind of uh, your character, your status in the community and your patron and things kind of and how that matters in the game. Could you talk about that a little bit? It certainly can. Uh, we have built into the Sage, which is the name for the game master in this in this uh, game. The Sage chapter has some uh, guidelines for downtime activities. 
and also uh, legendary status. And legendary status, what happens when you finish out your campaign, your character can either continue going on. Something I've been working on for Demon Lord, but also I want, I'm planning on doing again for Weird Wizard, is to turn characters into their own, to make them patrons and have other characters mm -hmm. that are, that have, for the next campaign, that might be working for them or how they become major figures in the setting. Uh, your status, your community, as you have, that was the question was asked, uh, certainly going to be affected by what you choose to do in downtime. And there will be more. We have a pretty good standard set of rules for downtime in the core book, but mm -hmm. as future releases come out, there'll be more options and more nice. ways to develop the game as far as intrigues and mass combat and all those kinds of things. And just to alleviate any fears, so you're still going to continue to do Shadow of the Demon Lord content in addition to Shadow of the Weird Wizard. This isn't a replacement, yes. right? Good. Yes, I think my, we just my clone, my clone <laughs> is almost done, and we, I'm going to get another desk for him, and he'll be banging away on that. But yeah, we'll be I'll be maintaining the the, the a, a best stronger release schedule for Demon Lord than I have been over the last couple of years. So yeah, more content very much a yes and situation then which is just just to alleviate i saw some fears in the chat and i thought i'd just put their minds to rest in case in case they were worried this was a this was taking over as something else um so we've talked a lot about kind of questions about the game from the perspective of somebody that's that's played shadow of the demon lord and that is kind of you know coming to look at this and the differences um but if you were to give a pitch to somebody that's not played either and just was completely new to it how would you kind of invite them in and welcome them into the game key thing here is, is exploration, uh, having mm -hmm. your decisions matter, and being able to shape and create your stories with the other players, mm -hmm. uh, having a simplified and easily digestible play uh, game system that gains mm -hmm. complexity as you master it, uh, rather than be confronted with the fullness of all the stuff that you need to do at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and also that this game doesn't demand much of you as far as time. You can, yeah. as I mentioned before, 44 hours, if you meet once a week, you know, you're 10 weeks, you've completed a full campaign. Uh, it's, there are very few role-playing games, I think, that will give you that kind of ability. Uh, and yeah. so I think that this is, and the other thing too, is especially for people who are coming to this game from Dungeons Dragons, it mm -hmm. does have some familiar elements. It does use a D20, mm -hmm. but there's, but that was a conscious decision on my part. The D20 is yeah. so iconic to role-playing yeah. games that, uh, I want people to come to this game and say, I know what, when I want to do something, I'm going to roll this mm -hmm. funny die and it's going to have numbers on it rather than bizarre symbols that I have to translate. So that's mm -hmm. the goal is to try to make this as painless for anybody, no matter w whether they're absolutely new to the game or, you know, seasoned cynical veterans like myself. Cynical seasoned cynical veterans. I like that phrase. That's nice. Um, so as you mentioned, the D20 was was always going to be in, uh, but were there any elements of the game in playtesting that have kind of come in and out that you're happy to talk about? Sure. Uh, at one point, we were going to, well, I was we, uh, I was going to do paths. I was actually going to bind and bolt in spells onto paths that would actually have the ability to cast spells. Mm -hmm. And so if you played a witch, you'd have a list of witch spells. And if you played a necromancer, you'd have a list of necromancy spells. Um, that at one point was a really cool idea because it meant that you could just print out your path from the book uh, or the PDF rather, and then just carry that with you and have it all there. But as I've come to realize through extensive play testing that some mm -hmm. of those things, while were an interesting idea, just weren't a good fit for this style of game. Uh, mm -hmm. We've, I mean, I've had, I think 53 iterations of the rules chapter uh, to kind of give you an idea of how, wow. uh, how committed I am to making sure yes. this is as perfect as possible. Yes, fantastic. Um, and yeah. some people are kind of in, obviously, a lot of people are very excited for this game, as you well know. Uh, so people are asking, uh, is, is there a playtest document or something available that people can look at? Or how's the best way for people to kind of engage and, and get more information about it at the moment? There are two portals to get to it. Uh, you can join the Shadow of the Weird Wizard Facebook group. Uh, the files mm -hmm. are linked in at the very top of that. You just mm -hmm. have to get permission for a moderator to join. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's really just proving you're not a robot. Uh, sure. or, 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 yeah, or have good intentions. The other mm -hmm. option is to go through Discord at the Shadow of the Demon Lord uh, group. There is a sub category called Weird Wizard, and you just ask for a membership there. And the moderator there will also hook you up. 
Excellent. I put links uh, in the, the chat and also if you listen to the podcast and the show notes to your website that has links to both of those uh, things. But sorry, you were saying. I was going to say that also when, when, the, when the Kickstarter goes live, uh, we will have anybody who backs will have immediate access to the files as well. So you'll be able okay, to start great. playing immediately. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Um, so we had a lot of questions from fans kind of coming in and, and talking about stuff. Um, but, but what are the things you want to kind of brag about in the game and, and share about the questions that I haven't asked you yet? Because I've, I've been all over the place in my excitement, I'm aware. <laughs> you know, I, I, the biggest thing I want to talk about with this is, uh, uh, is and this is going to be kind of sad, but I think it's worth doing because mm -hmm. he was my friend and I'm still sad about it. Uh, Kim Mohan it was was supposed to be the editor for this book, and mm -hmm. since uh, May of last year, uh, he and I have been working uh, hand in hand to make this the best thing we could make it. Mm -hmm. And he passed away unexpectedly at the end of December, and mm -hmm. it has been a, a heart wrenching experience trying to go through this. But I will say that Kim's voice and Kim's hand is still visible through this book and will always be. And I've Part of the reason why I'm so committed to making sure this is as good as it can possibly be is because this will most likely be the very last thing he will have touched. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to make this a, a tribute to him. Yeah. And so uh, anyway, not to be too sad or somber, but no. I'm excited yeah. because because I got Kim Mohan to do a lot of the editing on this book. And Kim Mohan mm -hmm. was, was by far the best editor in the business. For sure. And yes, yeah, so sorry to hear, you know, of, of your loss with that and things. And it's great to hear that his voice is going to be kind of a part of a part of this book and part of this game as well. Um, so thanks very much for sharing that with us. Um, so if you do have, um, if people wanted to ask you some questions about it and didn't get the chance today, where's a good place to kind of grab you to ask questions about the game or about any other upcoming projects? Sure. Uh, I, we have the schwabentertainment.com website. Uh, mm -hmm. We also you can find me on Facebook under Robert J. Schwab. You can find me on Twitter as Schwab underscore Ent. And mm -hmm. then I'm also frequently on Discord as well, again, with the Shadow of the Demon Lord uh, uh, page, thread, channel, whatever that is. Fantastic. And so it's best to go to the website if you want a notification of when the Kickstarter is going to launch spring sort of time this year is the, is the general yes. plan. Fantastic. For sure. um, well, myself and all of EM World uh, are very excited, as you've been, as mentioned, voted as one of the top 10 most anticipated games of the year. Um, so I'm sure we'll do very well and we'll probably want you on to talk about it when the Kickstarter's on back again. Um, before you head off, I do have a question I ask everybody, uh, which is if you have any recommendations for tabletop RPGs, uh, and the rules are it can't be one you've made and it can't be Dungeons and Dragons. So bearing okay. those rules in mind, what would you kind of recommend? I have three. And I'll be I'll be very brief, but Lovely. I just want to give you the three. Uh, Grok, that's some Wahoo madness. I love it. It's, it's <laughs> Hell Knight is also another great game, uh, yeah. and then the new version of Liminal or the the new Liminal book, also mm -hmm. a gorgeous and unsettling book. Check those three <laughs> out. They're available on Drive Through, and they're fantastic, and by talented designers. Gorgeous and unsettling. I love that. That's a great. They might want to take that and put that on the books at some point. So, <laughs> uh, Robert, thank you so much for coming on and uh, giving us your time. Really appreciating it. I think as you're kind of a veteran of the industry and somebody, a lot of people's favorite designer. So we're all really excited for this book. So thank you for coming on to chat to me about it so much. Yeah. Thank um, you so much for having me. This has been great. You're welcome. Uh, if Thank you for everyone that came along to listen live as well or listening to the podcast. Uh, we will be back uh, with Not D&D next week. We're having a tone shift. So the game next week is Her Odyssey, which is a solo journaling tabletop RPG. Uh, so if you're looking for something a little bit different, we're sitting down with the creator of that to talk to that game there. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll head off and say goodnight. Thank you very much. Good night.